My goodness me, we are live. <laughs> Welcome to Life Hacks with Mac and uh, this incredible opportunity to have this interview with uh, a long term friend, but an incredible uh, mentor, mm -hmm. inspirational speaker, uh, Gil Petersel, who has uh, taken networking, should we say, to a whole new level when it comes to understanding the the real mindset that's involved in uh you know when it comes to networking um the strategies behind it um overcoming some of the fears some of the pitfalls um and and he's done it at a at a level that you know most people could only dream of um and uh you know just prior to going live we were talking about the fact that it's been 21 years since i've got to know gil um you know this year it'd be 20 years since he attended my wedding in south africa and that's because he's a network of note. I mean, he got to South Africa. He was just all over the place networking with people. Um, and, and you know, when I got to know Gil here in the UK, just uh, I want to preempt something there, Gil, is I remember having a discussion with you about we were both reading Tony Robbins's book at the time um, when you just arrived in London. And we were both talking about it. And you were like, oh, one day, you know, I want to be on stage with this guy. And I want to you know, share the stage with people like this. And, and there was Robert Kiyosaki and various other people that we were talking about. And not too long after, you know, it's now all done. You've, you've spoken and you've shared the stage with all these incredible speakers. Um, but you go on to really serve and bring such value to networks around the world. And uh, so I'm really excited to actually finally have this live discussion with you. Welcome, my friend. Amazing, amazing. Thank you for such a beautiful intro, brother. I'm, I'm happy to be here with you. I'm happy to have uh, whoever is going to be listening to this and enjoying this. I'm happy to have them with us. I'm coming to you live from Bali. So I'm potentially a bit more relaxed and chilled than many of you. Uh, you know, we are in two different time zones in the world. So we bring this energy together. We cross pollinate as bees do and we bring our networks together. Yes, I have gone deeper into networking than most people. Uh, I've, I've, I've studied it, basically. Most people just try to practice it. They think they're good networkers because they do a lot of it, which is completely wrong. The, most people that, that think they're good at networking are pretty bad at it, uh, especially the authenticity part is mostly lost. Uh, I've gone deep into studying the arts and sciences of it, the, the you know, the um, the life hacks behind it that would allow us to shift our paradigms completely um, for me it's always been very important to see how can i completely change where i live and not be afraid of the moves or change industries and not be worried about how am i going to cope in this new industry and you know i lived in six different countries comfortably a long time build roots build networks build businesses i've I speak four different languages, not perfectly all of them, but enough to get around. And even though I failed out of multiple high schools and never went to college, I managed to network myself into becoming a visiting professor at many universities and to, to be able to network with people like Tony Robbins and Eckhart Tolle and kings of countries of billionaires and still be able to find the time to spend as much quality time with my kids because networking with kids is a whole different thing for me. Oh, my God. I get to learn something new. It's great, you know. But really understanding these days, especially through COVID, I went very deep into studying um, how plants network and how much we could learn from them and how they protect each other, how they cross-pollinate and support each other with energy, how they really need each other. And having a really edible, a cool edible garden in my home here in Bali has actually helped me learn so much about why I fell in love with you and your wife when I met you the first time. Why we lived in a neighborhood where everyone in our neighborhood in London was very international. Why we were attracted to each other because both of us were immigrants to London. All of these things today, after so many years, make a lot of sense. And I love that I'm able to help entrepreneurs use some of these lessons that I've learned because I'm still a very good student. I'm learning every day. And I love learning from someone like yourself so much, you know. Oh, my God, guys, if you're listening to this and you don't know how amazing Mac is, ah, meet his family, meet his girls, meet his wife. Oh, my God, he's awesome. Oh, man, Gil, I, I love the fact that you opened up with that um, interesting bit about, you know, people do a lot of networking and, and they assume they're good at it. Just because you do a lot of something doesn't mean 
anything, unfortunately. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's perfect practice makes perfect. And, um, you know, I've, I've seen, like you have, you know, in networking, a lot of people who go to a lot of networking events and, you know, unfortunately, we, we all get to know those faces of people that we know. They're just coming, they're coming into the room. They're going to hit the room, sell to the room. And it's like you, you want to keep them in your peripheral vision. But you make sure you want to keep moving away from them um, because they only have one intention. They're not there to bring value. They haven't done any research. Um, and, uh, you know, it's and, and then they wonder why they don't have. Uh, growth within their organizations and their businesses. Um, so, you know, I've got I've got tons of questions for you because I've I've experienced this. I've seen how it works, and I know you uh, have a totally different insight on these things. Um, but as somebody who's an avid networker, and I love net, I love meeting people from all over the world, whether it be virtually or face to face. Um, and it's so much more than literally just you know rocking up and handing over business cards. And unfortunately. Uh, yeah, a lot of people miss the boat. They miss that whole, um, you know, deeper sense of why you're connecting, the intentions, the possibility. Um, you know, most people are just trying to sell and run as opposed to opening themselves up to, you know, bigger opportunities because that person you're speaking to, I learned the hard way, you know, um, many years ago with uh, somebody that, I was, you know, I was desperate to get some more business in and I was thinking, okay, I've got to go in and try and, and, and sell. And somebody um, had a conversation before, beforehand. And they were like, well, what are your intentions? What are your expectations? And I was like, well, well you know, I want to try and sell. And I was like, well, what happens if that person has a bigger opportunity than you trying to do a one-off sale? And I sat there and I thought, wow, like really? Anyway, so I went in with an open mind and we had a conversation. The next thing, this person wanted to collaborate and introduce me to various people. And I was like, Oh, wow. Okay. Had I gone and tried to sell, I would have lost all of those opportunities um, because of the, the kind of single minded mindset um, that most people unfortunately have. So w one of the big questions that I have for you, because most people just they, they register, rock up for, a, for an event um, and then go out and you know, the aim is to get home with as many business cards as possible that they may not follow up on, uh, may end up in a jacket pocket, might end up going to the laundry. Oh, what's happened there? All good on my side. Okay. For some reason we have, oh, there we go. Um, sorry. We had a technical glitch there for a second. Um, so, you know, and, and, and they might even have half those business cards end up in the wash and, and, you know, forget who the people are that they connected with. Um, so, when it comes to preparation, you know, like talk to us about that because it's not a simple thing. It's not just a matter of registering and going. Like what goes through your mind when you think, okay, I'm going to an event. Like as an example, you went to Davos, which is one of the biggest you know, opportunities from a networking perspective, but you didn't just rock up there. Yeah, it's a, it's a really beautiful pre-frame to a, a powerful deep question. And, you know, let, let's assume our audience today is quite diverse and, this might not be relevant to all of you because if you're in the corporate world today and you're walking into a an event that your company is organizing, you have a different kind of preparation. If you're an entrepreneur that's walking into an event where it's about business development, about attracting investors, it's a different kind of preparation. If you're just an awesome human being that's going to you know, your, 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 your friend's birthday party and you haven't seen this friend's a lot recently, but they've changed jobs and they're in a complete new industry. And like, you know what? You won't know 80% of the people at their event, but you know that this guy or this girl always has amazing people at their event. Always. And it's a birthday party. It's going to be like, you know, 50, 100 people. It's a huge networking opportunity for any reasons to meet amazing, inspiring people, to meet mentors, to meet loved ones. To meet someone for, you know, a fun weekend. To meet people that can join a hobby with you. Like right now, in a couple of weeks, I'm hosting a men-only retreat. Uh, going by Jeeps to see three amazing sacred waterfalls here in Bali. And it's not even my event. I just want to do it myself. So I'm, I've met some people along the way and I'm bringing them together. It's not a business. And these are not my best friends. I don't know some of them. But there are so many different reasons why to network? And I always tell people, start with that. Start with the why. Why am I networking? 
Why, why am I going to an event? Why, why, what's the point? Am I only looking for clients every time? Of course, networking is, is the number one methodology, set of tools, habits, rituals that we will use every day in order to achieve more. And achieving more is only going to be, in my opinion, with the help of others, the help of new connections, the help of old connections, the help of relationships. That's how we get more of anything, whether it's clients, whether it's investments, whether it's employees, whether it's hobbies, whether it's loved ones, whether it's uh, whatever it really is, friends, it's all from networking. Now, unfortunately, the word networking has received a bad rep in the world where people think, I don't want to go to a networking event because it's all about selling to each other. The, the, you know, it, it's an unfortunate position that has happened in the world. And um, I am one of the warriors out there. There aren't many of us that are fighting to rebrand that word. We shouldn't be afraid of it. If we are afraid of it, AI will surpass us. And AI will network better and faster than we do. If we become really great at, at networking with each other, I, you know, I say to people that I have been the leading student of human networking for the last 10 years. And I'm very confident that I've been, if not the best, one of the best students in the world because I'm constantly studying from people. I'm constantly studying from old civilizations, how communities were built, how people were sitting around the fire a thousand years ago, a few thousand years ago. And wh why did they have a structure of an algorithm of there was harmony to the way they networked? And today there isn't. So doing the research about an event starts with the why. Why am I going to this event? Who do I hope to meet? I call that networking manifestation. Choose, literally. like Imagine for yourself what kind of people can you meet and speak about them in 20 to 50 words each. Don't just say, I'm hoping to meet a boyfriend. I'm hoping to meet an investor. I need to meet new clients. Don't, don't be that kind of a person that describes the human beings that will come into your world in this immediate near future in a few words. Describe them in 20 words, 50 words. You know, like, I'm really hoping to meet, like, let's just look, say you're looking for clients. And let's just say you're a coach, you know. I'm looking to meet people who are entrepreneurs earning at least three to $5 million in the company. They're, they have a very impactful business right now. There may be a family man because I love working with family men. I'm a family man. There's someone who likes to travel the world. Maybe they're not as confident as they could. They have massive potential for public speaking, but they haven't stepped into it. And I know that they'll be inspired by my story and potentially they're looking for someone like me to support them and coach them in different ways. So I don't know how many words that is, but let's just say that's about 50 words or so. Um, see if you could do that yourself as a part of the preparation for events. Speak about the people you wish to meet. Even more, if you know you're going to spend some time with someone, like whenever I go to an event and I check out who the speakers are, I check out who the host is, I check out who are some of the VIPs that are expected to come. You know, when there, I have thousands of examples, but like my, one of my favorite ones is telling people like I knew I was going to meet Richard Branson. I knew I knew I would be in the same big event as him. I wasn't one of the speakers. That would have been cool. I wasn't. But in that event, this is many, a few years ago, I wasn't one of the speakers, but I knew I would show up and I knew that if I did everything I could, I could get in somehow into the backstage and spend maybe a minute with him. Maybe I'll get a photo. But for me, the ability that I had to think about what research can I do about this man now, not what is he achieved, but what's important for Richard Branson today? Like, what would I say to him that is not top 10 questions to ask Richard Branson. That's kind of stupid. When you meet someone you really look up to and you ask them the top 10 question, everybody asks them that's written everywhere on the web. And I, I researched what was important for him. And for me, it was awesome that when I walked into the green room and there was 30 other people in the room, very respected, very highly, like, wow, people that I, I, I respect, like, wow. But I was the only one that ended up asking him a question of what was important to him based on my research. And I asked him about Virgin Airlines' specific opportunity that he was having a challenge with. And I asked him about the Virgin phone that he was launching that year. And I asked him what was important to him. And because of that, I'm the only one he handed his business card to within a few minutes of that conversation. I'm, I'm one of the only ones that his PR agent agreed for him to take a photo with because there was an engagement that was relevant for him. I, I wasn't trying to do business with him now. 
I was trying to start a relationship with him now and hope that he sees value in me. So when we do, when we do like any kind of research, when we prepare ourselves for an event, have a why. Why am I going to this event? Have a who. Who do I know I'm going to meet? Or who do I hope I will meet? And then have some level of a follow-up commitment. Because as you said, Mac, people think they're good at networking. Same thing like people think they're good at cooking. But we've all been to bad restaurants. There's enough bad restaurants out there. And that chef thinks that he's a very good chef. And like they don't get the message that people don't come back. But there isn't one. There is many everywhere and it's the same thing with everything else there's people who think they're good at something and they're really not in the eyes of others so maybe an artist and maybe that artist community thinks this artist is amazing but many 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 others don't it's the same thing with networking maybe in your culture maybe in your community people believe you're good at networking once you start to step out of your network to new what i call the outside network not your internal, not even your external, which is still quite close, but it's the outside networks, different countries, different markets, you know, changing industries. Once you step out, you need to assume, you know what, I got confidence, but I'm, I'm going to be like a two or maybe a three out of 10 in networking in, the, in, this, in this new strategy, in this new tactical approach. What could I do to constantly improve myself? Like, wow, that becomes exciting for me. That's why I loved moving industries in my life or coming into a new country and saying, wow, I got a clean slate. I just showed up in Dubai two years ago for the first time. I didn't know almost anyone. I knew a few people that have moved there, blah, 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 on LinkedIn. No close friends, no close connections. And I was like, how do I conquer this market and making it my business playground without making it my home and creating revenue streams while living in Bali and wanting to do some activities in Dubai in the middle of COVID? And having that mindset and that formula, I was able to execute that very easily. And I love showing people how easy it is to bring that into any corporate structure, any entrepreneurial movement, any charity initiative. It's wonderful. It's, um, you know, you've you've covered so many things that uh, really nicely dovetail into um, the next question because you've already kind of alluded to it about you know, the swapping of information once you actually meet somebody. Um, and that's, that's an interesting one because, you know, as you mentioned, you know, Richard Branson gave you his business card, you know, and, and later on I'll get to, you know, what do you do once you've got to like after the event? So we'll, we'll get to that part, but there's still so much, so many steps before that even happens, you know, you're at the event. Um, and I've seen people get, miss the opportunity to connect with the right person because of, lack of preparation so little things like you know getting there and they forget their business cards um or they get there and like me as an example i use linkedin for everything but guess what not every venue has a signal and it's like what do you do it's like okay you get there and it's like hey scan my barcode oh well nobody has a signal oh well uh, uh, and then you're fumbling and then you look like an idiot and you struggle to yeah you know, and you lose that opportunity because that person also wants to speak to other people so they're not going to wait all time and then you know you're going to try and get a pen and if it's somebody who's really important the chances are you know they're going to be grabbed by somebody else anyway so little things like that um you know i have a, a strategy that i use but i'd love to know what your strategy is um when it when it comes to guaranteeing that if you meet the right person there's a way to follow up and contact afterwards Wow, it's such a deep, deep question. I'm, I'm now writing another book. I'm going to finish it this year and launch it. It's called The, the Follow-Up Code. Uh, the Follow-Up Code is a deep, deep um, spiritual um, you know, practice that I've been going deeply into because I realized that as humans, we're pretty bad at it. Um, we're really pretty bad at, at, at following up, at staying in touch and and managing multiple relationships in multiple countries, especially if we change countries and change industries. Um, And there's so much beauty in that. The good thing is we got a lot of technology that can help us. Uh, The great thing is we have AI now fully in and AI can help us. So there's a lot of systems in place. The wonderful thing is, you know, if you're an entrepreneur out there and you can afford having an assistant, it means you can also afford having your assistant study how to be a networking angel. 
And this is something that we're constantly teaching uh, others. We, we upgrade, um, you know, all the assistants that we've ever worked with, like my clients' assistants, we always upgrade them. We help my clients today, entrepreneurs, we help them hire a networking assistant because if you're a busy person, doing everything you just said, Mac, is not necessary. Someone else can help you follow up. You can just set the standards. You could set the system that you need in place, but the reminders on when to follow up with someone or giving me a prompt to leave a one minute voice message to someone every month is quite powerful. That's the, the only way I could stay in touch with so many billionaires and kings that I know. It's, I don't need to see them. I don't need to do business with them. But leaving them a 30 second to a one minute personalized voice message is very, very powerful. I like that you, we have a cat that's joined. I'm loving us. Loving us. Yeah, Absolutely it's loving it. Bit, that's powerful. A little bit of entertainment. Yeah, that's that's Ginger. Ginger is a oh. wild cat that knows how to network with other cats. It's, it's a story <laughs> for another time. It also knows to tell the rest of the network, don't mess with this house. Because we live in Bali, you can have a mouse, you can have a snake, you can have different things. He knows how to tell, she knows, sorry, Ginger knows how to tell the rest of the network, hey, stay out. This is my home. I love that. Awesome. Um, so the, the follow-up part of things, you know, it, it's more about understanding that if you're coming to an event, how prepared are you? So the business card, the QR code, the quick exchange of, of WhatsApp numbers, the quick photos so you could send them a follow-up, you know, these are little hacks that I do. Even with Richard Branson, when I met up with him, my objective, of course, was to get a photo with him and somehow to get his business card because of my my structured questions and my 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 prompt of how I could follow up with him, he was happy to, to ask his assistant to hand me his business card. That was really awesome for me in front of everyone. So I was like, yeah. <laughs> um, the second thing is I wanted to get a photo with him. And that's also a, a follow up opportunity. I don't need a, a photo to just post it on social media and show how cool I was, even though I did use it. But it's more about sending him an immediate follow up and say, hey, it was really great meeting you using that photo. Um, but with the photo with Richard, I didn't say, hey, Richard, can I have a selfie? It's not, come on, I just got his business card. I said, you know what, Richard? My wife just finished reading your book and she's your biggest fan. She's never going to believe that we just had this conversation. And he said, let's take a quick photo and you can show it to her tonight. I was like, yes, great idea, Richard. You asked me for a photo. I love your ideas. It's wonderful. I literally said that to him. Um, but imagine the power of sending a quick email right away and saying, hey, thank you very much for giving us your attention. I appreciate you sharing all your wisdom with, with the group. I'd like to follow up with you on X, Y, and Z once you're back at home. Here's a quick photo that's going to remind me a day where I met you and we planted our first seed together. Saying something like that to someone without any need for an immediate business opportunity, even though he offered me to come to Necker Island, he offered me to bring a group of entrepreneurs. This was our business at the time, you know, taking large groups of people to the best places and the best events in the world, like Tony Robbins and Eckhart Tolle and all the others. But the power really comes in the, the serendipity. You don't know you're going to meet someone amazing and you meet them and you connect with them. The point of connection, it's not about let's do business now, but maybe the mindset can go on to, could I see this person as a mentor, as a friend, or maybe as a strategic partner? As a mentor, can I learn something from them? Meaning, can I choose to be vulnerable? Can I choose to ask for advice? Can I choose to be impressed with what it is that they do and allow them to share their wisdom? That's allowing them to feel like a mentor. Could this become a friend? Are they like me? Do they like similar hobbies? Can I mention I like horseback riding or I like sailing? Can I mention that I'm a father of three and hey, they're also a father. Wow, great. Let's connect. You know, where, which school do your kids go to? Suddenly you're potentially having a friend. You know, that's great. No need to be best friends, but it takes it that way. Or again, is this a strategic partner? Is this someone who shares values in business with me? Is this someone who similar targeting of avatars? So for me, a strategic partner is someone in a completely separate business to myself, but we share the same client avatar. And that's the best thing to find, to meet someone, a completely different business. Like I'm in a cheese business. He's in the wine business. Like, hey, we share the exact same clients. We can talk about how to support each other. We can run a cheese and wine party, you know, whatever it really is. And that mindset can be applied to so many different industries that can cross-pollinate. And I'm, I'm a, 
I, I like to call myself this because I'm a genius at coming up with strategic partnerships. And only because I've done over a thousand of them for others. This is something Jay Abraham told me a lot about. He's like, Gil, if you want to be a genius, strategic partnerships, and because I see Jay Abraham this way, he said, if you want to be that way, get to 1,000 strategic partnerships that you created for others in different industries. And in IT and banking and fashion and restaurants and mobile apps and investment funds, just help them, whether they pay you or not, whatever. That's, of course, an important one. But get the experience with a thousand of them. And then your mind is just there. You're thinking, everyone I meet, how can I help you? How, who in my network can help you? Who do I know that can serve you? And thinking that way shifts the person feeling about me. They're not feeling, ah, Gil was trying to sell me something. Gil is pushing himself onto me. No, Gil just wants to connect. I think um, you know, you've, you've mentioned a, a few things that are so powerful. Um, and one of the things that I, I use a, a similar strategy with is that sending a photo to somebody, not you know, putting it on social media, but just sending a photo to them, uh, whether it's on WhatsApp, LinkedIn, email, um, just so that they've got context of how they met uh, you know, prior. And one of the things that I found is you just never know where that conversation may lead. So, you know, uh, I've got an example recently where somebody I met a couple of years ago at a networking event um, and life happened to them. The, you know, the conversation kind of dropped off uh, and, and things happened. Um, and a year and a half later, I got invited to another e event by somebody else. And this guy walked over and he was like, man, I really loved what you said about X, Y, Z and starts talking away. And, and I just smiled because I knew who he was, but he didn't. And I was like, can I, can I ask you a favor? So just go onto your LinkedIn, check your DMs. And he went, what do you mean? He says, oh, can we connect? And we went onto LinkedIn and he was like, oh my God, you're Mac. He says, we spoke two years ago. And it was like straight away, the, the, the connection was there. The relationship um, was already you know, catapulted into a whole new conversation. And he, he, the light bulb moment went on where he kind of realized what, um, what had happened that the, you know, there was already that spark, that connection that, and, and previous contacts. Um, and it, it just catapulted our conversation into some incredible introductions. But it's context, because unfortunately, one of the biggest mistakes people make when they network that I find, and I don't know if you see this, Gil, is, you know, and we've spoken about the follow up, is, you know, they'll, they, most people probably won't connect on LinkedIn, they'll, they'll keep that business card. But those that do connect on LinkedIn, they'll go, hey, yo, great meeting you at X event. Uh, let's connect. And that's where that's the finite point. That's that's yeah. pretty much where it goes. Yeah. It's like, yeah. and then okay, so you, somebody's accepted your connection request. So what? You know, there's no context. And then when something comes across their path that may you may be the right fit for, they've got yeah. no context for it. They can't find it. Um, so out of sight, out of mind. So um, you know, I don't know what your thoughts are uh, on that. Yeah. So you know, I I love having such conversation with people like yourself, Mac, because. You know, we're, we're talking about networking at a pretty high level. Um, you know, we're currently talking at level four, even level five, touching level five. Majority of people that I, I've ever met in the last 10 years have been at a level two at their best days. You know, to give you context, I'm very comfortable to say this. On my craziest, best days uh, as, as who I am, uh, I'm, you know, even though I've been called a networking guru by, by many hundreds of magazines, media around the world. I've been on the front cover of many magazines around the world as the networking guru. My best days, I'm a six, maybe a six and a half out of 10. And wow. the complexities of human networking. When I say this to an audience, I always like to ask the audience, you know, who ranks themselves a two, a five, an eight? And it's amazing how many people, usually mostly men, not so many women, usually mostly men, think they're an eight or a nine out of 10. And sometimes when I have the time, I literally like to bring them on stage and like, let me, let me talk to you for a second. <laughs> and, and I'll give them a minute to introduce a humbling themselves, experience. for example. Well, I'll show people, like, I'm trying to like, not, you know, ridicule them in any way, but I'll very quickly and very simply show massive faults 
and them speaking for one minute, just introducing themselves. Massive. And I try to kind of show them respect. And like, usually I'll give them like, I'll pump up their confidence because they came up on stage. And but I'll say, hey, guys, don't laugh at these people. I'm not here to put these guys down. I'm here to show you how bad we all truly are. As humanity, we're pretty bad at human networking. So when it comes to understanding how to make that initial connection, yeah, I love the idea of sending someone a connection right away on LinkedIn and saying, hey, it was really great meeting you at this event, mentioning which event you met at. Again, for me, I have systems for this. I have two women that support me and my team. They're my community managers, and they do that for me as systematic, and the authenticity comes from me leaving a 30-second to a one-minute voice message. It's me speaking, and I remember with that person, I'll say, hey, John, it was really great meeting you. I love that conversation about X, Y, and Z. Let me know if there's any opportunities, the future events where you think we can cross-pollinate. Just to remind you, this is the sort of events we host. If we can ever support you in any way, please let us know. Um, I, I've, I've noticed what it is you're working on right now, but uh, you know, to make sure my team and I are fully aligned, maybe you can leave me a little voice message and tell me what's the most important priorities you have right now or out of all of your projects, which one is the most exciting one for you? And leaving an example like that as a simple voice message it's so powerful, it's so authentic, it's so real, it's so you, and it only takes one minute. And if you could do that, that to me is planting a powerful seed and giving it, like literally speaking about my, my, my nature here, my, my edible garden. When we plant something in the garden, just leaving it there and walking away is not enough. Ensuring that it gets enough water, ensuring that it has some you know, uh, organic pesticides around it to support it, to support it from the rest of nature, that it has some, you know, organic nutrients that we could use from other plants to give it life, you know, to have a, ro a bed of roses growing right next to like cucumbers and a, a mulberry tree and a papaya plant, like, wow, you know, all of them are supporting each other. It's the same thing in our network. It's great to have the diversity and not everyone needs to have immediate action now. And there is a way to systemize it. There is a way to connect LinkedIn with some third-party softwares that would allow you to manage your CRM system better, depending on who you are as a business. You know, If you're making a few million dollars a year, you're now at a stage where you must have a networking system. If you're an entrepreneur that runs a business that's you know, one, two million dollars, kind of still family business, you must have a networking assistant. You know, It's just important. That assistant usually could be like a personal assistant, business assistant, with a networking angel training, you know, that's really important. And again, it's something that we love doing for people because I see it's just a weakness. And every time I meet anyone doing teaching networking, I, I'm like, thank you. Thank you, please. We need more teachers. This is by far, in my opinion, the most important uh, subject. Uh, it's, 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 it's rituals, it's habits. There's so much beauty in understanding how to connect with other human beings in order to find our destiny, in order to find happiness and wealth and health and, and, and any kind of flourishing um, you know, relationships and network we want around us, that is by far what makes people happy. Like Harvard did this massive, Harvard Business Review did this massive research for like 40 years with another 20 different universities and understanding that people in their 80s, 90s, 100s, what they value the most in their life is their network. That's what they, they, the moments they had with their network. And how do you find a network? You network. You need to network in order to find who's right for you now. Because, you know, sadly speaking, I had to create space for my family in my 30s because they were driving me crazy. I had to change some of my friends in my, my mid-30s because they were not aligned with my values and what they wanted is not what, who I was. And once we start understanding that it's not all us, it's not all our fault. It's not all in our hands. It's not all in our power. It's in our network's power. We start understanding that we can actually change our life. We can lose weight. We can make more money. We can change jobs like that just by changing a few people on our network. And there's a lot of hacks that can help us do that so easily these days. And, and again, you know, um, ah, you know, so powerful because... Uh, we've all heard that uh, you know the six people that we spend most of our time with, um, you know that how that impacts our own mindset and everything else, um, and your network. And this is you know when I when I talk about um, strategic networking on LinkedIn, um, you know your network can make or break you. Um, 
And uh, you know, I see a lot of people uh, on LinkedIn as an example, and they're they're all about the vanity metrics. So it's like, hey, look at this person. They've got like thousands of likes, thousands of comments, all those kind of things. And, and a couple of years ago, I, I sat with a somebody who I thought I was going to reach out to be a mentor because I was like, looking from the outside, it looked incredible because you know the guy was posting some really valuable content. Um, he uh, he was really insightful. He was getting thousands of 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 likes and comments and. But I, you know, about 10 minutes into our conversation, um, having a one-on-one, I was like, man, uh, how are things going? How are you finding business? You must be thriving. And uh, he turned around and he was like, actually, you know, I'm about to um, like throw the whole thing in because uh, LinkedIn, I've been doing it three years, posting every day. I get thousands of comments. It's lots of noise. Um, and it's just dragging me down because actually I'm not getting any business from it. And I was like, for three years, posting every day, having millions of views, um, you know, a uh, hundred thousand uh, plus followers, and I was like, how? What? Why? And we looked at it, and I was like, hold on, um, I I think I know the answer, but I want you to tell me. And he went, we went through the whole thing, and very quickly it came apparent that his everybody that he was engaging with, the people that were engaging with him wasn't his target audience. They weren't the mm -hmm. people that he needed to be around. And it was like he was posting at 8 a.m. in UK time, and his target audience was US and Africa. And I was like, hmm, interesting. So you're posting when it's convenient to you. You're connecting with a lot of people, but none of them have context and understanding yeah. what you do. So going back yeah. to that why, um, and if you don't know your why, you'll just do stuff. And this is what of people course. do in networking is they do stuff. They go and get cards. Yeah. They... So I love the fact no that no one has ever taught today. them how to network. Yeah. No absolutely. one no one has ever taught me how to network. I, I didn't get a class in school. Why why in high school did we get a class about politics or money or sex, but not about networking, a subject that's so under understood and under properly utilized, and people just do it because we taught we learned it from someone else. Uh, we learned it from the movies, we learned it from doing it badly. That's the thing, badly. Um, and, and, you know, if you think about school, you know, having three children as an example yourself, you'll understand the impact that if you don't teach your children how to interact and socialize and network, the, the dangers of that, are they going to network with the wrong people? They're going to fall into the wrong crowds. They're going to learn the wrong habits. And they won't, you know, and this is survival skills. Um, and I, as Recently, as humans... Recently, I actually read a massive research that's been just recently published how most of the understanding of um, family psychology has been completely misanalyzed in, in, in for many years now where people are always thinking it's the parent's fault. And if something is wrong with the kid, it's because of what the parents was and how the, the father or the mother was, blah, blah, blah. But actually, all this research shows that it's so much more the parents of the kids that our kids are friends with. Every one of our kids' friends has their own style of networking. Each one of the kids that shows up in the school and spends more time with my kids than I spend with my kids. My kids are away for, you know, eight hours a day in school. I... I do not spend eight hours a day with my kids. I wish I did on the weekends. I do on vacations. I do. I love it, man. I recently went on vacation with my kids for three weeks. We went like Israel and Dubai and it was amazing, man. I took time off of work. But usually those kids and the teachers that spend time with them, they have a much, much higher effect on how our kids will develop than we do. And that mindset, needs to be applied to, well, I'm not a kid anymore, I'm an adult. If I'm agreeing that the future of my life is completely in the hands of other people, completely, again, anyone can challenge me. If you're listening to this right now, if you're listening to this, like, challenge me that any of you have achieved anything alone in your life completely. Anything, please challenge me. I love it. If you challenge me, you get, a, you, get a, you get, you mention one thing that you've truly achieved in your life completely alone, and I cannot rebuttal that. I'm bringing you with me to the Tony Robbins event coming up either in England or in Australia this year. No problem. Free of charge. My ticket. Challenge me because people have tried to say, no, Gil, 
I did this on my own, or I do this on my own. And every time I could challenge him and say, hey, get it into your head. Everything we do is with the help, with the support, with the guidance, with the mentorship, with the lending hand, whatever it is of another human being. Whether we know them or not, it could be a book, it could be a movie. Another human being has affected us to progress in life or to degress in life, to somehow move forward or move backwards. We don't eat. Some human beings make us stay still, which is even worse. They make us not move. They fear and this and this. We don't like, like, you know, we don't want to move up or down or anywhere. We're just scared and stressed and whatever that is. But if we agree to that, we understand that, wow, all I got to do, if I want to lose 20 kilos, all I got to do is just meet some people who are constantly now losing weight. Okay, where do I do that? Or if I need to hire, right now I need to raise money for my company, all I got to do is be, I don't need to be near investors. I need to be near people right now, not one, but near people who are now raising money. Not worse than me, not much better. I don't need to be around billionaires. I need to be around people who are two, three steps ahead of me. Not one or two, but many of them. And once you understand who you need to be around in order to go to your next step, it's very easy to find them. You know, you want to meet rich people? Go to art galleries. You want to meet other entrepreneurs raising money? Go to accelerators, go to incubators, go to startup pitch nights. It's like there's answers to everything. You know, you want to meet a husband? Do not go to a club night. Go to somewhere where you and your husband would have something in common. Go to a, a cooking class. Go to an, a, 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 this, an, an art painting class where you get to meet other people who share similar hobbies. And this is something that I did myself, Mac. If you remember back in the days when I was in England, you know, you were already in a happy relationship. I was a single man and I had to find ways of hacking the system. And this is before Facebook, before any of uh, LinkedIn and all that. So, I had to like go on like speed dating and online dating and find ways of stepping into other people's networks in order to find myself, like to find balance. This is how if you plant a new plant into any of your gardens, that plant needs time, sometimes days, sometimes months, to build its roots underground. Why is it building its roots? Not just to take nutrients from the ground, but to connect with other plants around it. They network underground. That's why a tree is so strong. Not because its roots are in the ground. Its roots are being held by other, by other trees and other nature. They're connecting and holding each other. We're not going to go into the discussion of Avatar, that all nature is fully alive and networking around us. That's a conversation for another time that I can easily discuss and argue very easily. But we are as well as people, which means when we go into an event, and we're looking to connect with the right people. There's a very simple strategy how an investment banker, I work with like big banks, I work with you know, some governments, I love working with entrepreneurs especially, who need to hack the way they've been moving into growth, whether it's new clients, whether it's new mentors, whether it's new strategic partnerships, whether it's you know, bringing in some new investors. You don't have to look for the one, it's like bullseye. People spend so much time looking for the perfect one. The silver bullet. You need, to, you need to identify the, the type of person you want to bring closer to your network. Yeah. So, you know, I, I tell you what, this is like a, a wealth of knowledge and a fountain of information just uh, flooding through. So I hope people are taking notes um, because there are so many valuable points here. Um, and I love the synergy that we have and the thinking of, you know, that networking isn't just a show up and swap a card. Um, you know, one of the things I, 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 I've get asked quite often is, you know, you know, Mac, when you arrive at a networking event, you just, you just speak to anybody and you're happy to have a conversation. It's easy to kind of go. Um, and I, I tend to find that it's, you know, going back to that why into the confidence of knowing why you're there, what you're going to say, then it makes it easy to start a conversation. But a lot of people it's out of their comfort zone. So, you know, do you suggest that people have like an elevator pitch or something in their head so that when they arrive at a networking event, they can be more confident because they know what may come out of their mouth as opposed to, uh, you know, uh, start talking about the weather and something random? Yeah, so uh, of course you, you need to be a little bit prepared. It's like, you know, wanting to make a, a new recipe at home for your family 
it's the first time you're doing it and not following any kind of recipe, not following any guidance, just going in blind and you're trying to make a new lasagna. You've never made lasagna before. You don't know what's going on, what to put first. And at the end, you get something that doesn't look like lasagna. It's not tasty. No one eats it and you end up ordering pizza in. It's the same thing. I tell people that networking, you can do it and you'll get okay results every time. But it's a simple hack of networking can start at home, right? So you don't need to go to a networking event to use LinkedIn effectively. You could just look into your, you know, harvest your old connections. I love opening LinkedIn, opening WhatsApp, and just searching for keywords. Search for the word friend. Search for the word investment. Search for the word client. Search for the word London. And see who have you ever used that word with. Or even then do even more. Take your WhatsApp and scroll down 20 times. Just scroll down, scroll down, scroll down 20 times, 100 times, go back three months, six months. And then take, give yourself an hour to do this, or 30 minutes, and ask yourself, why have I not been in touch with these people? What, 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 it's, it's six times easier. It takes less resources, less attention, less, less brain power to reconnect with someone from the past than it is to make a new connection. So I always tell people, Low-hanging fruits, guys. Don't, don't overcomplicate it with networking. Don't try to, to play at a level five when you're still trying to, you know, get to a level two. Stick to level two. It's great. Hey, level two, you can achieve so much in life. Most of the world is. Coming to level three is just working less. You know, in the last three, four years, brother, I've worked 80% less than I have before. And I'm making, you know, five times more money than I have before. And for me, it's wonderful. I don't need to become a billionaire right now, but I love that I'm spending a lot less time working hard, a lot more time working smart. And most of our work, doesn't matter what you do for a living, it's networking, most of it. You're either networking with human beings or you're networking with computers. Hopefully, you're networking with human beings through computers. Hopefully, not, not too many people out there because AI could replace everyone like that that's just sitting there and designing a poster or do, sitting there and doing an Excel sheet for a whole day. AI could replace all of those people tomorrow. AI will not be able to replace human-to-human -human connection, not anytime soon. And this is something I'm very confident in. And I love that. I love that we're going to have this ability uh, for some of us who choose to network more mindfully, uh, to net network more authentically. And it doesn't matter what level you're at, you know, Mac, you, you've been to the Tony Robbins events with us. When, when we've been going for the last 10 years, I've been representing Tony in different ways and you know, showing up to 30 plus events with Tony or Eckhart Tolle or Jay Abraham or the greatest people in the world and knowing the event from different sides, you see the quality of people that are showing up at these events. And you understand that if I want to, for the rest of my life, I can network only with those kind of people. And that's pretty cool. If you think about it, there's 8 billion people, you know, the average human being will actually build any kind of relationship or conversation, maybe seven, 10,000 people in a lifetime. Any kind of a chit chat, not the woman in the supermarket that you say thank you very much and you pay her, but anyone you speak to her for a few minutes, you know, seven thousand to ten thousand. So imagine you make a decision to, hey, maybe now I will be more mindful of the kind of events I go to, and then I'll meet the higher quality of people that's more right for me. Maybe that's an easy way to hack my way to the next level of my happiness and success. Maybe it's the way I look at LinkedIn differently when I'm networking with people. So I could just network with people at virtual events if I'm not feeling comfortable for myself. The way I introduce myself comes from a position of a karma. Maybe some of you don't believe in that. But actually, if you want to become really good at introducing yourself, I would highly recommend you practice on the way you introduce others. Um, I, could, I could say with my hand on my heart, I believe I'm one of the top 100 people in the world who can introduce a human being better than most of, like I can introduce you, Mac, better than most other people. I'm very, very comfortable with that. If you tell me 30 seconds, one minute, whatever it is, in any situation, meeting the president of a country, meeting a queen, meeting an entrepreneur, I would know to adjust that introduction to make it very relevant to the point and to the, the audience in front. And practicing on that, ladies and gentlemen, is the best way that you will learn to adjust your introduction, not your pitch. You don't need to pitch unless someone says, pitch yourself to me. If you're standing in front of someone and you've just introduced yourself in a nice, you know, polite way, and they say, wow, tell me more. I'd love to know more about your business. Sure, step into a one, two minute pitch if you want to. Or just if you think that this is very relevant, you could say, well, um, you know, 
I, I, I'd love to tell you more about the company, but if, if it sounds very interesting for you, can I set up a call with you? Or can I take you out for tea tomorrow? Or like, let's meet up. Right now, there's a lot of probably amazing people that you want to meet. So it's almost like if you see that there's a great opportunity there and it's a little bit loud, don't get into pitching yourself right now. If that person liked your introduction, clearly they're interested. Exchange information and say, hey, let's follow up tomorrow if this is relevant for you. Or get into a little pitch, but get into a pitch keeping in mind where you are. Is it Friday evening at you know, 7 o'clock in the evening in a pub? And yeah, you're meeting an ideal VC for your company. Even though they're saying pitch yourself to me, they really don't want to, to do more business on a Friday evening. So consider doing it differently. Consider doing it like asking them a question. Like, example, you're in the app business that helps people find the best deals, whatever it really is. Imagine asking them, hey, do you ever look for better deals in your life? You know, do you ever wish that you don't have to look for a product in the hard way through Google, but you can find an app that will customize itself to you, know who you are, know what you're looking for, know what kind of fashion you want, know what kind of movies you like, would be fully customized for you and would make your life much easier. You do? Great. This is what we have to do. But listen, Brian, let's not get into this conversation right now. I'd love to follow up with you and tell you more about it, you know, maybe later on this week. You know what I mean? It's like you can give yourself them a pitch but don't get into your three-minute pitch that you're used to doing in front of investors when you're, like, pitching. You know what I mean? So what I tell people, practice. It's like practicing to make the perfect pasta or to make the perfect lasagna or whatever it really is, the perfect, you know, um, green curry. I've, I still haven't made green curry in the perfect way, even though I've been taught by Thai chefs when I was in Thailand, you know. We, we, don't, we don't need to perfect it. We just need to be great in that moment. And that requires practice. Confidence could be faked. Confidence. Could, I, 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 I used to fake confidence for many, many years. I just Googled how to fake confidence just because I was an immigrant since the age of 10. I had a, even in England, when you met me, I had a horrible accent in English. If you remember, horrible accent. In English was my third language. Horrible accent in English when I came in from Canada. And, you know, being an immigrant, having English as my third language, my confidence levels were not there. You know, I was just not there. So I had to, like, fake it until I made it in the most authentic way I knew how. Oh, Mac, I lost the sound. Mac, I don't hear you, brother. I just realized I, I made a, a what they call a user error and I didn't hit that unmute button. Um, <laughs> special moment. Uh, anyway, uh, but it's good because I, I wanted people to take a few seconds just to take in what you said there, because, you know, wh what they see is not always what is really happening. And this is why it's so important to, you know, dial things back a bit um, and, and take a step. You know, somebody asked a question um, earlier, specifically on this whole relationship building and um, networking side of things. Unfortunately, their settings don't allow them to uh, have their name come up. Um, so uh, one of the things that they need to go and check on LinkedIn to make sure publicly their uh, um, <laughs> settings are set up so that people can see who they're speaking to. Uh, but it says, uh, Gil, how do you handle the effort put in into building relationships when it's not being reciprocated? And that's something that happens a lot. Yeah, um, of course. If you, if you, well, anyway, you're going to answer this question. Yeah. So, so, so it, it, I, I get that completely. You know, one of the most common questions I ever receive is, Gil, how do I monetize my network? Because a lot of people don't want to feel used by their network. They're like, hey, if I'm doing something, do I get something back sort of thing? And yeah, you know, there, there's, I, I try to see networking as a, as a win-win just because I'm alive and I'm networking. So I kind of it's my default mindset is like, oh, my God, I'm meeting amazing new people in my life. This is so awesome. This is my default. I'm not in a position like, what are they going to take from me? Are they going to take all my energy? You're going to take all my uh, just that's your mindset. Try to, like, adjust that mindset of are you in a, in a position where you're thinking, well, I'm going to meet 10,000 people in this lifetime, whether I like it or not. I'm just going to choose who am I going to meet and how, what's my attitude towards them? Your perception to them, if they don't reciprocate and they don't add value, it's really up to you. Let me give you an example that happened to me a few months ago. I'm at this event here in Bali, in a really, really nice event, beautiful five-star hotel. And it was like a launch of some sort of a, a, new, um, a, a new spa that they were launching. I don't remember the details. I get invited to all these awesome events. And 
based on the quality of people that invite me, I choose whether to go or not. One of my friends walks up to me, I'm like, Gil, Gil, I got to introduce you to my friend Steve. He, he runs this awesome private business club in Dubai. He's in, he's in, he's in, he's in, 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 in Bali right now. He's considering to move you with his family. Come, come, come. Okay, I come in with them. No problem. Hey, that's, uh, you know, nice meeting you. Um, you know, and I see that in the first couple of minutes, Steve is totally not there. He's te- like, he, he, he doesn't want to meet me. I'm like, hey, like, you know, I'm like, they, my, my friend Mark introduced us and it was like clearly the right thing. And I just kind of see that every few minutes, Steve kind of pulls up his phone and he, like, he seems he's preoccupied. He, something is stressing him. And even though it's an ideal strategic partnership for me, like a business club, I love them. I speak in front of some of the best business clubs in the world. They're the best, you know, strategic partners for me. I kind of shift away. I'm like, listen, Steve, let's forget about the business club for a second. If you don't mind me just commenting, it feels like there's something else going on that's more important. I'd love to know. Maybe there's something I need to help you out. He's like, yeah, no, I'm sorry, Gil. You know, I, like, I, I actually wanted to meet you as well. You know, I've heard a lot about you. We want to bring you in as a speaker for our club. But my wife just sent me a message telling me that the, the school she was trying to get our kids into here in Bali, they didn't accept us. Um, and it kind of, it's annoying. That's one of the main things that was important for us to get our son into the school. I'm like, I'm sorry to hear that. What, what's the school called? And he tells me the name of the school. I'm like, well, in, in case I can help, you know, I'm actually the president of the parent committee of this school. It's where my three kids go. But if I can help you, you know, I can make a phone call and help you out, Steve. No problem. And, and he's like, what do you mean? Are you serious? I'm like, yeah, my kid, my three kids go to this school. And I'm literally like a, a, a week ago, I hosted a, a whole breakfast in my house for the most of the key parents in the school. He's like, and he looks at Mark. He's like, you're right. He is a magician. I'm like, are you talking about me? I'm like, yeah, man. And like Mark was telling me you're a network magician. And what I tell them is that sometimes you'll meet the person that you need the most and they need you the most. But unless you just dive into that moment and really try to understand how can we help each other? Why are we actually meeting? You know, that was a beautiful meeting for me because, of course, his kid got into the school. And, of course, he ended up inviting me to be a a speaker at his business club online initially. And, of course, he's inviting me in October to come back to Dubai and speak in front of his club. But that's not the point. The point is that I wasn't in a selling mode. I wasn't trying to monetize that immediate opportunity. I was in an opportunity to connect. I just wanted to connect with the guy. I didn't need to finish the sale, even though it was was the ideal moment and it was quiet and not very loud and it was like, good opportunity and Mark was introducing us, I didn't need to sign a contract. And it's the same thing again at the gardens. If you're a gardener and you plant a beautiful rose in your garden or you plant a a, a mulberry tree or a, a tomato plant, you're not expecting results now. You need to wait a little bit for it to get some nourishment and get something that would get there. And I've learned that there is hacks on how to get there very quickly. I don't have to wait three months for the potato, for the tomato to give me beautiful tomato plant to give me beautiful cherry tomatoes. There's very fast ways of doing it, which is a how can I help you mindset. It's a way that I don't need them to reciprocate right away. And even if they don't reciprocate right away, at least I'm building up some karmic points. I believe in karma and the network. I'm, really, I'm, I'm building up some karmic points with people. There are so many people in my network that are very valuable. They're very resourceful people. And I kind of have them in my top 100 people to look out for. And I literally leave them a message at least once every one, two months. And like, hey, what are you doing? What's new and exciting? I'll leave a one-minute me- message. And like, you know, hey, hey, Mac, it's been a couple of months since we connected. How are things going? Tell me what's new and exciting with the family. On our side here in Bali, it's been amazing. You know, our, our business with Tony Robbins has picked up again. We're back to old times before COVID, doing very, very well, finding strategic partners all over the world to bring them into the event he's got in July. My coaching business has been thriving. I'm finding some really cool conscience entrepreneurs who I'm very impactful that I'm helping. I like cross-pollinating with a crazy networks, and I'm always looking for some new mentors. If you know some people, would love to know what's new and exciting with you. What kind of help you're currently looking for and what's your biggest priority in your business right now? So that was less than a minute and that was not rehearsed. That was from the heart. I try to tell you a little bit about what's going on with me. I could have said more about my family. I could have added more. I try to kind of just make it as authentic, as real as possible. You could practice that, ladies and gentlemen, and just leave people some short 30-second, one-minute voice messages to 
allow that reciprocity to just live, to allow that relationship to, you know, to somehow simmer and, and, and be there and just allow that plant to grow a little bit more. Because, for example, I have a tangerine plant and we're now getting the first tangerines. But the first ones are super sour. They're not tasty. You can't even eat them. So you can do something else with them in the kitchen. But if I wait until like next season, they'll be much sweeter. I'll, I'll enjoy them a lot more. And it's the same thing with the network. We don't always have to get immediate results, but we need to ask for help and how we manage our network. And we need to decide, is this a person that is useful to the world? Is this a person that is resourceful? Is this a kind person? Does this person, do I feel like they respect me or honor me or do they look up to me or do I look up to them? You could do like a networking audit, which by way, everybody that's listening, feel free to ask me for a networking audit and I'll be happy to send you my networking audit. It's just a way to understand, hey, where am I right now in my network? And then you'll kind of get some insights of what's my next steps. It's just fun. First steps. I just did it again. So, um, <laughs> you know, if you, if you want access to that, please do us a favor, go and drop some uh, messages in the comments, whether you're on LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, um, and we will respond. We will get back to you. But, you know, go and connect with Gil on, on um, LinkedIn. Um, you know, the guy brings tons of value. Um, he is on Instagram, Facebook, you name it, he's, he's there. Um, he's even on Twitter now. Um, so uh, Am I? My, my, my team is that's telling my fault. you I need to be. It's because of you, that was my you, fault. you yeah. inspired my team. But guys, so, LinkedIn, connect with me on LinkedIn. Tell me that you've listened to me through this interview. See how you can improve your LinkedIn. Ask Max team to audit your LinkedIn so you can step up on your LinkedIn at least, you know, and try to understand it, how can I improve by just 1% in the way I network? And then do that again every few weeks. How can I improve by just 1%? And whether it's the way I present myself or the way I brand myself, the way I do it online, offline, the way I get mentors, like consider getting a networking mentor. Consider to paying someone like Mac to help upgrade you on LinkedIn. That's a big networking upgrade and a step up for anyone. Yeah, um, um, you know, Gil, oh, he's just disappeared. Um, hopefully he can join us again. Uh, but massive thank you to Gil for the kind words over there. If you are looking at uh, help with um, LinkedIn and your uh, networking audit, please do us a favor. Make sure that you... Um, reach out, go and put a comment. I know somebody's already put their yes, please, for networking audit resource, awesome stuff. Um, and uh, let's see where these conversations may may go. Uh, Gil is a phenomenal individual who has brought a ton of value um, to so many people around the world. Um, and uh, it's been a pleasure uh, knowing him. Uh, and hey, it looks like we are having him join us back in a second um, from multiple devices. Hey, Gil. Um, we lost you there for a second. Let my my phone just shut down. It said emergency temperature too hot, something like that. I literally <laughs> just put my phone in the freezer. I hope that's okay. But I think this is a sign, ladies and gentlemen, that your network must be hot. It must have oh. energy. It must be passionate. I've never had my phone shut down telling me emergency I need to shut down. This is way too hot of content. <laughs> oh, that is epic. Absolutely epic. But Gil, this has been an hour full of impact. So much information. I have no doubt we're going to have many, many more conversations um, and uh, you know, share all uh, a lot more when it comes to networking. As you rightly said, networking, you know, most people don't go beyond a one, maybe a two. Um, on the networking, I don't think I've ever been past a four, maybe maybe a four and a half at some stage, um, and you know got great results, but still knowing that there's so much more that I could have done, or better that I could have done, uh, or different ways to do things. Um, but the key thing I really want to focus on from the conversation we've had is you know being in the now. Um, is so important with uh, the networking. Is you know a lot of people are trying to think about. 10 steps ahead. It's like, okay, they, they're already signing paperwork, trying to close the deal before they've even said, hi, hey, my name is, you know, <laughs> and, and being in the now really being 
present and listening to what people are saying. Um, you know, like Gil, you 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 uh, gave that example of your friend Steve, um, where instead of pushing through for that conversation to try and get into a you know the business club, you were conscious, present of mind to know that something else was going on, um, and. You know, this is the one thing people forget is you, you're you not dealing with a business card or a business entity, you're dealing with a human being. And when you when you can just take that step back and go, hey, this is a human being. They have their own challenges. They have things happening in their life. Um, you know, where are they at right now? Um, because unfortunately, one of the big things that I see people do not only on LinkedIn, but just in life is they, they treat it like the old sales process where you've got 100 contacts and you try and sell to all of them and you know you're going to get one or two so you kind of go for the it's a numbers game you just you just burn and churn burn and churn um but what happens if you could instead of getting you know if you had a hundred perfect prospects what happens if you could get 50 percent of that or you could get 70 percent of that because as you were talking gil about that um um you know the the being in season and the first fruits it's it's not about trying to sell today it's about building the relationship that, you know, somebody might, if you try and sell them a gizmo or, a, uh, you know, a service um, that you might make, you know, a couple of grand from today, that could have been worth millions in the future had you fostered that relationship and you came in at the right time. But that same person, will, you can pretty much guarantee they will never do business with you if you pitch them immediately. And this is why we call the, you know, on LinkedIn, we call it the pitch slap where, I get a daily where it's like, hey, Matt, would you like some more leads? We sell LinkedIn leads. And I'm like, have yeah, you even yeah, looked yeah. at my profile? Come on, man. Like, yeah. What you, so, um, you know, with that, I'm conscious we've gone over time. So, Gil, your know, final words, um, final thoughts. I tell you what, this conversation has been hot and and uh, excitement. We've had Everything cats. Is, we've had things falling apart. We've had like, me going mute. The whole system here is breaking down because this is so exciting, clearly. <laughs> hey, I, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. But we'll we'll have more conversations. But final words from you. Firstly, you know, how can people reach out to you? What 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 would help you right now? Because, I mean, you, you've got this Tony Robbins things coming up. You're doing various other things. Um, yeah, you know, I, I'm, I'm constantly looking for people who want to connect deeply because they're doing something impactful for the world. So if you're selling chairs out there, good luck to you. Don't call me, please. Like, I'm sure you'll do very well, but it's not my focus. But if you have some sort of a technology, some sort of a business, some sort of a service, and you want to scale it globally, you want to do more, have more impact, you want to have more strategic partnerships, you want to spend less money on marketing and just be smart with your budgets and have zero budget marketing activities. It's called networking. And you want to have salespeople that are more mindful into relationship managers, not sales managers. You know, if, if you're in that position, let me know. I love having conversations with people. Discovery calls are wonderful. LinkedIn is a great way to connect with me. If you want to show up at a Tony Robbins event, I think Mac is going to show up again, maybe even with his, with his daughters. Um, you know, I, I, I want to see more people with us. We're always bringing about a thousand people with us to Tony's events. Um, you know, we've been doing this for many, many years. So anything connected to the personal development space is me. Any events that are being hosted in the world that need a networking facilitator to do a mastermind with the audience, to connect the audience even more. Because I do believe that you can have immediate results from networking as well. If you're in the right event and the right space, sure, you could sell yourself right away because your target audience is exactly in front of you. And the target audience is asking you, yes, please. Tell me, why are you better than him? Good, done, close the contract, no problem. There's too many opportunities like that out there. Of course, I love it. You know, when people tell me they're selling art, I'm like, and they're like, I don't know where to find clients. I'm like, find an art gallery that has big events that sells art a little bit similar to you and just attend their events and that's it. It's like, nice, your target audience is right here, everywhere around you. Everything is very easy when it comes to having, bringing a little bit of mindfulness and logic and, and, and authentic strategy into the network. And I like to just help people that way. So feel free to reach out to me, ladies and gentlemen. There's easier ways of bringing in the clients that you want, whether it's more corporates, whether it's more entrepreneurs, whether it's just more, you know, kind of social impact people to do more philanthropy with you, which I love doing. People are out there and they're looking for you. So reach out and let's cross pollinate together. Lots of love to everyone from Bali. Matt, thank you, brother. Oh, man. Gil, uh, this is a well overdue conversation. 
I'm glad we, we we have started this conversation. I think there's still so much to discuss. Uh, networking is something that's well, uh, as you said, you know, it has a bad stigma. It needs to be re revamped. Uh, people need to understand, um, you know, about this human impact. I love the fact that you brought in the whole conversation around AI, um, because you know. Eh, it's up to us whether we want to be defunct or not. And if we're gonna if we're gonna network at a level one two, um, you know, there's a, there's there's an app for that. You know, it's uh, it, swapping details. So what? Um, it's about building those meaningful relationships. And for me, uh, you know, if I can help you with that, uh, anybody that, that's out there, if you truly want to use LinkedIn to connect with people, not just so that you've got a thanks for connecting, another number on the notch. Um, but you really want to build relationships, please, uh, you know, reach out. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing where this conversation takes us, Gil, and uh, definitely um, seeing you when you're uh, at, at UPW. Um, I'll tell you what, we've got more photos at UPW than anywhere else. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, love to you, your family. Um, and, uh, yeah, let's um, see where this conversation goes. And thank you so much for the pearls of wisdom that you shared today because, People, if you know how difficult it is to get hold of this man, you'll know that this is a fantastic opportunity that you've just uh, experienced. Um, Thank you, Mac. Thank you, everybody. Let's do it again. If, if you're if you're the audience that's listening today tells us they want more, they got to tell us which part of networking they want to learn more about. We could do this every month. What pleasure. Good stuff. Well, folks, Thanks drop everyone. in the comments. Excellent Thank stuff. You, brother. Cheers, everybody. Bye bye.